I definitely wanted to do a video about this show especially. One of the things that just hit me by surprise about how much I thoroughly enjoy this and fantastically was addicted to watching this first episode of March Comes In Like a Lion. Now, definitely something that was very interesting immediately staring into this show and all that was like, I had not a lot of expectations to any of the uh, shows this season. Like, none of the original stuff that's coming out, I'm not including seasons two. We've had, like, so far, the stuff I've watched and all that, apart from the few, like, decent ones like that, like, coming out to, like, Drifters, I've seen the trash of the trash this season. I've seen stuff like fucking Cage, yo, fucking Melons fighting on the sea. And now that I found something that was incredibly heartwarming, and incredibly interesting, which is definitely seeing about Rei Kiriyama's story throughout the entirety of this series. So a very interesting thing about this episode especially that kind of caught me off guard a lot was the fact that one, this series is adapted by Shaft, which they've done stuff like the Monogatari series, that also as well along the side that they've also done Nisekoi and a few other series to boot up there with like Madoka. And it really surprised me how unique, like, the animation was, how beautiful this kind of, like, pastel, like, kind of, like, drawing, like, this kind of watercoloring, like, art style they had. It was absolutely gorgeous from start to finish, some amazing, gorgeous animation, straight up. But the fact that our main character, Ray, is, like, not talking throughout, like, near, I'd like to say, he doesn't even talk until, like, the nine and a half minute mark. You're spending this entire time with him, completely silent. And it's so weird as you're trying to understand this character throughout the entirety of this. And it's like, well, what? who is he? Well, you know, what is he? Why is he like so depressed? And just the way how this character is drawn, especially. This is one thing that a lot of shows have a lot of hard time, especially when it comes to animation. And it's the fact of drawing characters in a certain way. And I think that's a lot of the credit to the mangaka as well, drawing the character like that. But alongside with animation, and a lot can tell you by, like, body expression or how a character's mindset is immediately. And I don't know, there's one of the a few times where I felt that in the series as like those silent, the kind of like pretty much near silent nine and a half minutes that we saw without him even talking anything and trying to understand him because you see this character with just the most emptiest eyes like he's just gone through the pits of hell himself he looks like he's gone through an eclipse and back and he just wants nothing to do with life he just comes here makes some money and it's just like I was like whoa like you know I really want to know what went down with this kid like he generally looks depressed, he doesn't even know, like, how to get along in life, and then when we finally get a little bit of, like, once we uh, find out that he's actually a shogi player, and that the fact that, that he pretty much doesn't go to high school, from what it sounds like, and the fact that, like, this is pretty much how he pays his rent, he lives on his own, and then every, like, now and then, he seems to have this relationship, like, uh, with, like, these three sisters, like, uh, I believe they were called the, Ka the Kawamoto sisters, I believe it was, like, Akari, Hinata, and I believe it was Momo, the little one, and they're, like, the complete opposite him. They're all energetic, hyper, jumpy, and it's just like, yeah, man, I goddamn enjoy this. Look at this stuff. It's like, oh, I love this and all that. Oh, you're so cute. It's like, it was so baffling where he's like, you're seeing the most parallel universe motherfuckers here doing this stuff. And it just baffled me. And it was just like, and from what we found out a lot about in this episode is the fact that he is very emotionally damaged. The fact that, from what it sounds like, like uh, they're kind of like his adopted family. These like these girls and the grandpa, they look after him. And the fact that it's like uh, seemingly that like, the old man that he was playing with was a friend of his father. And the fact that, like, from what they're saying, is that his parents aren't around anymore. So whether or not they like it's from what it sounds like they died in an accident or something. But just when you looked at him, like when he was like hearing that stuff on the news about like some like uh, kid beating his dad to death and by like, beating him and all that, he was like what the hell and he was like when he was playing that match he was just like i feel like i was beating the shit out of this old man with my bare fist just beating him down and it's like he is not in the right mindset and it just it feels like it's going to be one of those shows that is incredibly heartwarming and really enjoyable to watch because normally i don't like kid characters i normally not a big fan of them they're normally really annoying and go Rah, you're so weird but this was the one show especially i don't know like it just felt really heartwarming to me and i feel like this is going to be one of those shows about this kid kind of growing up and kind of learning to accept that life is bullshit, life is unfair, like from what these kids, uh, these sisters have, that they lost their mom, that they also as well lost their grandma as recently, and the fact they accept life and they move on with it and they get on with stuff and they're even willing to accept you and take care of you and all this stuff. So I'm definitely looking forward to like what more of this show is going to be uh, like really interesting. Like the fact that it's like, it's like oh, Shogi seems like it's not even really going to be like anything a part of the series. It seems like, no, let's witness this boy's like, 
grow uh, like growth into like you know turning into a mature adult and like see how he handles things and i'm definitely really curious more about watching this show this really interests me i don't think i'm going to be doing episodes on it i think this is one of those shows that i want to let build its episodes uh but i might honestly i'm honestly really interested in this show i've already watched the episode twice trying to see if i missed anything like some little hinting or anything a little subtlety and all that but one thing i did notice on the second time watching i didn't wasn't really paying attention to is the fact that they're pretty much shilling and like promoting the manga like when he was on the train like just standing up i was like oh shut oh just getting that manga and plus as well like the the songs and all that was beautiful i love bumper chicken like god those fuckers are great my favorite song is from them is ray but it's like god damn they did that they did the tales of the bis opening like god these motherfuckers are fantastic and apparently the fact that they got these guys because the manga uh, is uh, like uh, the author for the manga is like a huge fan of bumper chicken i absolutely love that so good fucking taste on this guy overall this so far is probably one of my favorite actual shows i've watched so far this season like there has been, i've gone through a lot that i personally haven't cared about and there has been trash i've gone through and there's been good stuff like drifters but I feel like this is going to be something a little bit special. I don't know. I'm very curious about the manga. I'm very curious to see if like, anyone felt like this as well in the comments down below about this show. Because I honestly, I absolutely enjoyed it. I really had a lot of good entertainment for this. And I really want to see like where Ray comes at the end of this series. And I think it's supposed to be like 24, 20 plus episodes. So I'm very much looking forward to this last night. And I really hope that it keeps the same amount of quality. And I hope it interests me throughout the entirety. But straight up honestly recommend the first episode of this cannot just like pretty much i might just watch this and just be like i hope you guys are blown away like i was like i generally was really intrigued and interested in the show and i hope it keeps doing that more and more in the series let me know what you guys think of the conversation what what did you think of ray like what do you think about this emotionally kind of like destroyed boy like what do you think about him like and the fact that he's like don't he don't go to school like that he just doesn't make friends he like seems like he kind of not hates the world he's a bites it almost and like the fact that he's got this very warm like loving kind of like uh family these like sisters that are like generally opening arms do you think this is going to be like opening him up and all that like uh in the future and you think he's going to have an emotional moment because i don't know i felt really bad for him when you saw him crying when he was just like there asleep crying about like he felt bad about being that old man because he can't enter the tournaments because of that style and i was like oh the guy has feelings but it's like he seems so emotionally just like not there and I generally really had a lot of fun with this one. But that is all for me. Thank you very much for watching as always. And I'll see you guys though next time.